Hey, True Believers, England Teen here. So here's this article. It's a usual thing from Bleeding Cool. It's called Comic Store in Your Future. In this case, it's cheaper comics would mean no comic shops. And he's making the argument against what a lot of people make is that cheaper comics would bring in new readers and thus make more money. And I thought, okay, well, you know, if you're going to debate the other side, that's cool. Let's hear him out and see if he makes some valid points. The guy is Rod Lamberti from Rodman Comics. And let's see, he says, Much has been made of comic prices and some people claiming that they are priced above what people are willing to pay. That prices should be lowered, lowered back to what they were decades ago. That all sounds very nice and all, but lower prices would mean less money for the companies that produce the comics, which in turn means less money for the creators who help produce the books along with less money for the stores that will sell the products, which means fewer comics, less talent, less physical stores selling comics, along with even less online stores selling comics. Buying a comic online for, say, 40 cents and then having to have it shipped should be a great way to lose money. Hmm, okay. I don't think anybody's talking about 40 cent comics. When I hear people, uh, they say they want lower prices, usually they're thinking the alterna route, a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars a comic. You know, even two dollars or th- or two fifty or three dollars would be much preferred to four, five, six, and sometimes ten dollars an issue, where it gets ridiculous. The argument that com- comics sold so much better when they were 40 cents or however much because when the person was a kid, that is how much they cost, is not a good argument. Comics started out at 10 cents. Those days are long gone. The arguments that parents were more willing to buy a comic for their kid back then because they were so much cheaper is weak. Much more money is spent on kids nowadays. They get phones with monthly costs now paid for by their parents which is far more than 40 cents. Even when comparing a phone to a comic book, price-wise, you can't compare it utility-wise. A comic book is a luxury, and a lot of people these days are seeing a cellular phone as a necessity. And that's just the way it is. Connectivity these days is very important to people. The past can be selective, rose-colored memory filtered through childhood. I remember my parents telling me far more often than not, no, if I asked for a comic. I also remember no meant no. I did not ask for multiple times because I knew I would get into trouble for being annoyed. No, annoying, excuse me. 40 cents then was worth a lot more than 40 cents now. A new movie theater just opened here in Ankeny, whatever that is, Ankeny. Replacing the previous one, the ticket prices are $14 per adult. I remember paying $4 for a ticket years ago. Earlier this year, when I rented out the previous movie theater for a private show, our customers for comic-related movies, it was uh, $7 a person. That old movie theater is no more. Granted, the new movie theater is vibrating seats and offers more than a previous theater, though it is a big jump from seeing movies here. Okay, Uh, I was informed no more free comic-related posters for the store. Okay, so basically saying the movie theater one. Okay, what does that have to do with comics? Uh, on what you did say is, one, you're, you're, you're telling a personal story to make a broad point, and that's that your parents told you no. My parents often told me no as well. However, I was able to collect Coke bottles. I was able to scrounge up change to pay for comic books. And that's part, you cannot, it's, it's so much harder to scrounge up $5 than it is $2. And that's how I paid, you know, he's right, 40, 40 cents then, it's, you know, is, uh, it was a lot, worth a lot more than it is now. But it was, it's so much easier to get a lower price to go out and buy your comics than it is a higher price. So the only thing he said in that paragraph really was his own experience. Moving on. Cheaper comics does not mean more sales. As a comic store owner, I have tons of copies of comics that recently came out over the past few years for 25 cents. The 25 cent issues of Walking Dead, Sheena, Vampirella, Deja Thoris are still there. Many store owners do not want 25 cent comics because, quite simply, many stores do not make money on them. This will sound weird, though it is true. 25 cents isn't worth it to the average person to buy. It's too cheap. 
What people say and do are often two different things. I have tons of comics in the dollar bin. All new X-Men, all new, all different Avengers, Mockingbird, X-Men, Gold. The dollar comics from True Believers line and more, they do not sell. More than the comics that are priced $3.99. Not even close. On our day of sales, they are $0.80, cents, and even then, they don't sell. Going by both of these, see, I would pick some of these up. I do pick up some if I'm looking for the particular title. The problem is, and he brings it up in the second paragraph, all new X-Men, all new different Avengers, Mockingbird, X-Men Gold, all of those titles are from the past decade. And past decade sucks because, especially as far as Marvel is concerned, Marvel has not made the investment in Marvel Comics. They're out for the quick buck. So why should the reader make the investment in Marvel Comics? X-Men Gold's canceled. All new X-Men? Eh, done. All new different Avengers? Gone. Mockingbird? Gone. Once again, we, you know, we had this discussion before that comic book shops are forgetting the collector, and when they forget the collector, collectors aren't interested. If people are entertained by a comic, he says, then the price in their mind is worth it. Doomsday Clock is a $4.99 issue. It is a best-selling title in the store. It outsells comics that are a dollar less. I have had to reorder past issues and new printings multiple times because more and more people are wanting to read it. No one has said anything about the price. And that's another thing that you're kind of missing the point on. I've, I've got to say, he really is. He's bringing up back issues and saying, well, they're, they're a dollar and nobody's buying the back issue. People are talking about cheaper, newer issues. Things that are on the shelf, not in the back issue bin. Things that people can see casually. And price is just one of the things that people are talking about. But yes, a cheaper cover price on the shelf, on the new shelf, will get people more interested in trying. At least that's that's my opinion. That's how I see things. Obviously, he has a different one. And I think he's making points, some of them, even valid, but can be argued. One of the many things I learned over time I have owned Rodman Comics is I am not going to make money off cheap people. If people do not want to pay cover price for a comic book, they do not have to. Online is an option. Other stores discount their comics and so on. Why do I not discount comics all the time? Because it is not worth it. If I offer a pull list discount, then that is just money lost. Meaning, no one ever thinks, I just saved 20% off my comics, I'm going to buy more comics. If someone is getting all the Spider-Man related titles and then gets 20% off, they do not buy other comics thanks to a discount. It is just 20% lost to a store. Over the years, I have had new customers who prepaid for comics at a previous store, so they would get a discount and then that store would shut down. And then they worry if they will get their money back. It is not the first time that has happened. I have seen online businesses suddenly close that offered a discount on comics of people prepaid and then have caused former customers to worry if they lost their money. Okay, we he's just going over the same thing again. I know that my comic shop encourages people to buy more by offering, uh, like every $10 you get a dollar. And then once you get, uh, once you spend a hundred, you get ten dollars off your next purchase. So yeah, you get a discount, but they, they, they do that by uh, encouraging you to actually spend money. So yeah, it's ten percent off basically uh, of uh, or ten percent extra, I should say, of uh, your hundred dollar purchase. Comics are not nearly as commonplace, he says as they were a decade ago. In previous columns, I've stated that I go into a comic book shop thanks to being able to read comics at a grocery store and drug stores and so on. It would be years before I would even learn comic stores were a thing. The, lacks, the lack of places to buy comics hurts. Yes, we brought that up as well. Another thing I've stated, though, some people complain a lot. People have generally accepted $3.99 as cover price for a comic. And that's actually part of the problem with readers. And I noticed this uh, probably... This started uh, occurring to me in the late 90s, early 2000s, where I realized we were just going along with it. If we didn't want to pay the high price, we wouldn't have. I did it too. I had to have my Legion of Superheroes. I had to have my JLA. You know, but uh, yeah, he's right. People just accept it. People don't want it, but it's possible. But then again, that's, that's just my opinion.
He says a bigger issue I see other than prices of comics is the fact that many Americans do not feel like they're getting ahead financially. Inflation is currently not an issue because wage growth has been slow over the years. After the recession, many people recovered to the point of what they made before the recession. Many more did not see a significant increase in their paychecks, working to just maintain what they have, have become a way of... It, it's, it has working to just maintain what they have become a way of life. This guy needs an editor, man. Seriously. Now I'm like discussing how he's writing the article. I, I thought I was stumbling over words, but no. For the Avengers, ah, for, for the Avengers. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. For the average American, prices seem to keep increasing. For the average American, prices seem to be increasing more than their paychecks can keep up with. So you'd think maybe lower prices would keep them in the uh, hobby? I am currently trying to save up for a car. My hope is my current 2008 car lasts for at least one more year to give me enough time to save enough for a new car. <sighs> yes, I do own an IROC. Okay, get to the point. Though it's 1991, I don't want any fancy. Okay, thanks for your car news. Alrighty. To visit Disney World is over $100, yes, unless you get the annual pass, and then you can pay it off in increments. What does that have to do with that? Debt is a huge factor for Americans. I hear from many, okay, what the fuck? Are, where, when, okay, I need to balance. Make no mistake, I finally remember comics of my childhood. Yeah, okay. I finally remember comics of my childhood, Avengers, Batman, Batman and the Outsiders, Avengers, uh, Fantastic Four, Justice League. Yes, we all know that these titles used to exist. Though comics from my childhood were made much cheaper than they are now, old school newspaper print and lower paper quality is most, like, most likely is not going to fly for comics in these days. That and the fact paper used to make comics is much more now than it was decades ago. I disagree. You print a good story on it and people will buy it. That's what I think anyway. Also, I'm wondering if this guy is paid by the word. Because he is just putting down a lot of filler. Want to see more copies of comics sold? Wages need to go up. The trickle-down theory does not work. <laughs> when a company uses its profits for things such as to buy back stocks that help people that own the stocks, Sears spent $6 billion over the years. Okay. Um, there's Okay, uh, let's see. Millionaires are not my regular story. I read an article about Nicolas Cage going to a Comic-Con once. He spent thousands of dollars while there and most likely made people some money and very happy. Sadly, that's not going to happen here in Inca. Well, congratulations. My gosh, he's, I, I don't know. This guy seems to have lost the plot. The middle class is what moves the economy. My customers are mostly middle class wage earners. When the middle class does well, then that helps a lot of businesses. The customers that spend the most money in my stores are middle class people with good paying jobs. If new comic books were less than a dollar, there would be no physical locations to buy comics at. To see more comics sold, wages need to go up for everyone, and the comics being offered currently need to be found entertaining. Well, that's a part of the problem too there, brother. More money on hand makes it easier to spend more money. Duh. Comics also need to be thought as by a wider range of people as a great source of entertainment. More comics coming out that get people pumped, such as DC's Rebirth Number 1, with Wally West's return. People really liked that comic, and in turn, we sold a lot of it. Even the higher-priced reprints sold well because people wanted to read the comic. Excited fans spread the word about what they like, which in turn grows readership. And congratulations. That is one of the reasons, yes. I do believe that you would have... As I said before, this did not change my mind, and uh, I do believe that if you had lower prices, if they were even three dollars or two fifty, if they were competing with alternative, if they were newsprint, if they were good, they would sell, and if more books were good, you would buy the line. Right now, you're spending four dollars. If you learned all of a sudden you could spend, buy two for that price, you would pick it up. And if they found out a way to make the comic book cheap enough to do that, then they would make money. I don't know. It seems like they're raised par prices to make up for the fact that they have low sales, which causes low sales. I'm not an I'm not an economic uh, econ 
Economist. Damn, I hate it when I do that. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this guy's absolutely right, but I don't know. We definitely disagree on this particular issue. One thing I don't think anybody would disagree with me other than this guy is that he's wordy and he goes off on tangents. But then, don't we all? But that's just my opinion. What is yours? What do you think about low prices can close comic book shops? That's that's the uh, issue at hand. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, I don't know why. This guy was so wordy and he went off on tangents that I actually got bored reading it. And I know that transfer. But if you do like the video, or if you don't, try something else on this channel. Uh, but just click like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And also go on over to Patreon or PayPal or even Ko-Fi and uh, help us keep the lights on here. Helps keep making videos for you. Ko-Fi's got a tip jar. Just going, hey, I like what you do. Here's a buck. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. Thank you, Frag Minion, for being your, the first person on Ko-Fi. And uh, to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you.